Our product idea began at a lens crafters in Syracuse, New York. I visited the eye care retailer to get a routine eye exam done. While going through the eye exam and talking to the doctor, I learned that he was not satisfied with the current slit lamp design. The doctor explained that the slit lamp's design restricts the machine to a table, as you can see from the photos on the slide. This makes the machine difficult to use on patients that are overweight, pregnant, or disabled. The doctor explained that the design makes a routine slit lamp exam both uncomfortable and sometimes painful for these patients. It also makes the results of the exam longer to attain and less accurate for doctors. After hearing about the customer's pain, the all-inclusive chin rest was born. I'm Alessia Bagliano. Alongside me, I have Mark Purcell, Joe Lombardi, Sean Barnes, and Victoria Carson. Now Mark will discuss the opportunity we have at hand with the all-inclusive chin rest. Hi, my name is Mark, and I'm going to be talking about the problem today. Our problem originates with the standard uniform design of most medical devices in a doctor's office. With 6 billion people in the world, we are all unique in different shapes and sizes. About 35% of eye care patients are overweight, which comes out to around 45 million people. On the other hand, about 73% of eye care specialists have indicated that they always or often experience problems due to the standard slit lamp design, and we are here to change that. Doctor's Complaints Some of the complaints we have heard from doctors includes the extra time it takes out of their day and their client's day to help them get an accurate reading from the slit lamp device. Other complaints about the current slit lamp design included being uncomfortable and also making visits to the optometrist unpleasant. The Solution here you can see a video mock-up of our prototype. It is, qu it is quite a simple design that features an all-inclusive chin rest mounted on a railing system built to meet any needs that the consumer has. This design will easily and seamlessly make your patients feel more included. And now on to why our product. Why our product? As you saw in the previous slide, a video of the all-inclusive chin rest, there are several features. First, the chin rest is on patented railing system that can move toward and away from the patient, making the slit lamp much more accessible. Second is a flexible headband providing maximum support, which will help in stability of the user. Third is hinges that allow the product to easily connect to any slit lamp. This is extremely beneficial given the price of a slit lamp ranging from ten to twenty thousand dollars. Our product, the all-inclusive chin rest, costs two hundred nine per unit and will drastically improve the value of the slit lamp asset. Fourth is the product will be created out of high quality, durable, and lightweight materials. There are several benefits to this. Quicker slit lamp exams, more accurate results, more comfortable, enjoyable routine eye exam for all patients, which will eventually lead to an improved doctor-patient relationship. The market we are approaching is the ophthalmic good merchant wholesaler industry, which is projected to grow at an annualized rate of 2.4% over the course of the next five years. One of the reasons for this industry's growth is higher incidence of ocular issues among the an aging population. For instance, cataracts, optic nerve disorders such as glaucoma, and retinal disorders. The industry profit margin ratio is around 30%, and majority of eye specialists are found at private practices. The all-inclusive chin rest will be marketed to three target markets, private practices, eye care retailers, hospitals, and VA centers. In the United States alone, there are 36,000 private practices to which we can market. There are 1,500 retail stores such as Lens Crafters and Pearl Vision, and 3,000 vision centers that have an eye care specialist on site such as Walmart and Sam's Club. There's also a combined number of around 8,000 hospitals and VA centers. You'll also know, notice there's a growing trend at hospitals altering their patient rooms and buying new equipment and building new wings to better accommodate their overweight and obese patients. Now that Joe has identified our target markets, we have devised a plan to best reach these markets. Our marketing strategy has three primary objectives that I will break down for you. The first objective is to build a credible brand that offers value to both doctors and patients. Our company has gained credibility by our partnerships and board of directors, which we will explain in further details later on in this presentation. Our next objective is to emphasize that medical equipment should accommodate all people of all sizes and body types. 
Accommodating a larger array of people is a growing trend in the medical sector. Our last objective is to educate eye specialists of our product and the great benefits it offers. Through extensive primary research, we have identified four effective strategies to raise awareness of our product. Firstly, we will hire an initial sales team of five people to personally sell our product. Our sales staff will visit private practices in hospitals to demonstrate how the product works and to discuss the benefits it offers. Salespeople will be offered a 7% sales commission for incentive to sell as much as possible. As a chief marketing officer, I will personally vet, hire, and train the sales team to keep sales pitches effective and uniform. In addition, we will send direct mail to the offices we visit so potential customers have a tangible brochure highlighting our product's features and benefits. Having direct mail will remind potential customers of our product. Based on our interviews with 15 ophthalmologists, a majority of the doctors we spoke to subscribe to an industry publication. The two major publications we will buy ad space in are 2020 Magazine and Envision Magazine. These magazines often feature new products and trends within the eye care industry. Therefore, it's the perfect place for ads regarding our product to live. Together, these publications have a total of 80,000 subscribers we plan to market to. Lastly, we plan to attend a minimum of four ophthalmic conferences a year to expand our professional network, spread awareness of our product, the all-inclusive chin rest, and initiate partnerships with conference attendees. These ophthalmic conferences are great places to connect with buyers to make our product more credible within the industry. Another key to effective marketing is having a powerful and knowledgeable board of directors. We currently have three members on our board of directors that I will introduce to you. These members will help us grow the company and help us make strategic decisions. Our first member is Dr. Sai. Dr. Sai is a licensed ophthalmologist with over 25 years of experience. She opened four private practices in New York City and understands the nuances of how private practices operate and how orders are placed. Therefore, her experience will help us advertise to eye specialists with their own practice and help us understand their buying process. Additionally, she has many colleagues on the East Coast that she can connect us with to help us expand our clientele. Next, we have Dr. Sikonig. He has been an optometrist for almost 40 years and has worked at both a private practice and an eye care retailer. Dr. Sikonig has helped us develop the idea of the all-inclusive chin rest. Therefore, he is very knowledgeable in this space. In addition, he will help us pitch to retailers and make improvements on our upcoming products. He currently works at Lens Crafters. Lastly, we have Mr. Polk on our board. Mr. Polk is a mechanical engineer currently working at General Electric. He helped us develop both a sketch and 3D model of our all-inclusive chin rest product. Moving forward within R&D, we will consult with Mr. Polk when developing new products to get his insight and expertise. Next, Sean will discuss our operation strategy. Our operation strategy will, will first consist of filing a patent. To keep our product competitive over, over time, we are going to obtain a utility patent to prevent other companies from copying our design and entering our market. In addition to this, the company has decided to work with Topcon Corporation, a Japanese manufacturer founded in 1932 who specializes in the manufacturing of optical equipment and instruments. Topcon will manufacture all of our all-inclusive chin rests for us. The company has also secured a partnership with Macro Ophthalmolic. Our partner provides vision diagnostic equipment for eye care professionals and offers a wide variety of products, including slit lamps and acuity systems. This partnership is beneficial for our company because it allows the company to tap into all of Macro Ophthalmolic's existing customer database. There is both a front stage and a back stage to our operations plan. The front stage includes first raising awareness via trade shows, publications, and brochures. We will then send sales reps to private practices, retailers, and hospitals. Then the consumer will demonstrate interest in our product. Next, the consumer can choose between a trial period or an outright buy. The next stage will be an order confirmation, and then the order will be delivered. Then there will be usage by the customer. If trial period customer has the option to buy, they can either return to the trial product or buy the product. This is the end of the front stage. The back stage includes shipping, the placing of the order through a sales rep or through a website, the product being taken from the inventory or warehouse, 
and in the clean rental of the return product to the warehouse. The revenue drivers of the all-inclusive Chinres. This will include its price, which is $209.99 per unit. We will also sell all-inclusive Chinres paper, which will be sold for $12.99 for a pack of 500 sheets. Competitor pricing for the Chinres paper is usually $9.99 for a pack of 500 sheets, but since this is exclusive to our Chinres, we believe that we can charge a slightly higher price. We will also license our product to ophthalmolic wholesalers. The cost for our product will include a variable cost that is $35.17 per unit. The monthly fixed cost for our product is $33,000 roughly. The variable cost for our product will include a cost of goods sold which is $20, a product liability insurance which is $0.47, cents, and then a sales commission which is $14.70. All of these are per, per unit. Our break-even calculation will include total fixed costs plus total startup costs. This will equal $151,000. Going into our fixed costs are management salaries, sales team salaries, warehouse rent, office rent, travel expenses, marketing and promotion, and utilities. Then this will be subtracted. Our variable costs will be subtracted for the selling price. This will equal our contribution margin, which will be $174.82. Then once you divide this by the total fixed cost plus startup cost, the break-even quantity will equal 868 units. Our contribution margin will equal 83%, and the unit contribution margin will be $174.82. So as Sean mentioned, our chin rest sells for uh, $209.99, whereas our pack of 500 chin rest papers that goes exclusively with our product sells for $12.99. And with this, we're allowed to have a uh, profit margin of 62.5%, and we attribute that to our very low variable costs and high sales price. Um, our variable costs come from a quote from our manufacturer, so that's why we got such a low number. Um, and then we consider our model to be higher margins with a lower inventory turnover. So by year five, we expect to have revenues of 5.2 million, and we got this using our sales projections that our terminal growth rate was going to be 3.6%, and that's because it's um, the average growth rate for our industry. So the chart here shows our revenue expenses and net profit for years one through five. Um, so as you probably noticed, our revenue grows um, a very large amount from year one to year two, and the reason for that is that um, in year one, we're only going to be actually selling our product in November and December. The all-inclusive chin rest itself makes up about 80% of the revenues, whereas the chin rest paper makes up the remaining 20%. In the first year, we are projecting a net loss of about 479000 but then in years two through five, we expect to be profitable. With our net income in year five being about $2.9 million, excluding our income tax expense. Our minimum threshold for cash on hand is 250000 and our projections show that we'll consistently be above that mark throughout, except from July through November of year one. Using the discounted cash flow model, we valued our company at about $2.7 million using a 40% discount rate. What we're asking for today is $825,000 in exchange for 31% equity in our company. We plan to use the money by using $185,000 for the cost of goods sold of 9,000 units, $93,000 towards startup costs, $125,000 to hire a three-person sales team, $75,000 for R&D, and the remaining $322,000 will go towards warehouse rent, storage, and maintenance. We have two possible exit strategies, and the first would be to sell our entire company to one of the major ophthalmic wholesalers, and we estimate that the bare minimum price we would be able to sell our entire company for would be $5 million, and in that case, you would get 31% of the profit, which would be 725000 so your minimum ROR would be 725000 or an 87.87% .87 ROR at the minimum. And our second option is to license our products and technology to one of the major ophthalmic wholesalers, which would be Marco Ophthalmolic or Zeiss. Thank you for your attention. We hope you join us in providing doctors with medical equipment that accommodates all sizes and body types.